Well, welcome back to the Always Reading Book Club. It is your girl, Kiki Reader. And we're going to do one of the series, but they can be read as individuals. So there's a series called the Morgan Fire Series. It's by M. Lee Prescott. And each one of the books are a standalone. So we're going to do book one which is called Lucy's Hearth. We meet Lucy and there's a guy there named Gus who was staying at her studio apartment that's above her garage. He's just moved out and she got kind of used to him and it does make her feel a little sad that he's leaving. He apparently got a job that he's going to go to and... I get it. It's a job. It's closer to where his fiance is. So makes sense for him to leave. We find out that Lucy is getting a divorce. She's got a 14 year old daughter named Amy and she's got a son named Rob Jr. And she met this guy named Richard Morgan probably over a year ago in a place in Arizona that was owned by Richard's brother and there was an immediate attraction an intensity with Richard but at the time she was still married to her husband she wasn't she was committed she wasn't trying to do anything and so she never gave in to that or or never let anything happen so we find out that her husband Rob she met him when he was pre-med and our girl Lucy has her own business, which is like a mail order business. It's called Merlin's Closet and it specializes in children's books. So when her and Rob first got this home, it's a big home. It's got like five bedrooms. It, one of the rooms was turned into an office for her. So Rob's parents had some money and so when they died his sister Chloe she took a property that was in like Cape Cod she was like oh I want that I want that but she only wanted it because she wanted to sell it and she wanted to take that money so she could go to LA and pursue a career as an actress so last Lucy heard it wasn't going too well (laughs) she's probably broke that's not funny but i don't know why it's just you were gung-ho i get it you have dreams right you're gung-ho about it you make a sentimental thing of wanting the home but that was a lie you really just wanted it to sell it and then the reason for selling it doesn't really pan out i don't know maybe i'm just mean (laughs) i was just like but it made me laugh so back to Lucy. So Lucy never really saw herself not being married to Rob. So this has been like a real, it's been difficult for her to kind of come to ter- come to terms with the fact that her marriage is over. Um, because, you know, again, she met him when he was pre-med and here we are. He's a, he has a thriving business, he does, but her business has thrived as well because it went from being her office at the house to having to get space downtown for her business. So she's doing well, you know, she's doing really well in her, her career um, too. So we don't know what caused the divorce. She says that she kind of knew something was off with the marriage. Um, She tried counseling and apparently that didn't work, but we don't know the core issue. So I, of course, am very interested in knowing what happened. We then meet Richard Morgan. So we switch POVs. You know, I love it when a book does it. Richard is 53. He's a widow. His wife's been gone now for about 20 years. He's got a few kids. Um, I think he has about eight, but they only name about four in this chapter. I I can't go through all of those names. I'm going to have, I'm quite sure enough names between you got 
Lucy her kids. <laughs> and if he got eight kids, that is way too many. <laughs> but now I see why it's a series. Because you got to tell all these people's stories. Because like one book isn't going to do them all justice. So Richard is smitten with Lucy. He owns a, like a horse ranch farm type of situation. They're doing like a remodeling, rebranding. And they take in like wild Mustangs and things like that. And so Gus, who was staying in the apartment above Lucy's garage, he was actually, he's like a horse whisperer. And so he's having a meeting with his kids. Um, well, a couple of his kids, let me say it correctly. Um, Wheezy, who I want to say is his youngest, and then Gail, who's about 26. So after, like, the meeting, he lets them know they're going to have to have Callie, you know, fix them something. She's the chef because he's going to be going out to dinner with Lucy. And so Gail gets really annoyed. And she's got this thing where she'll bring up his mom whenever he gets like kind of start dating a woman she kind of likes to fuck it up basically i don't know any other nicer way to put it but she that's what she likes to do so when he says he's going to have dinner with lucy she immediately says you know mom really would have loved it here now keep in mind the mom's been gone for 20 years don't get it twisted i get it grief is grief but your dad is 53 he's gone 20 years without being in a significant relationship he's dated women but not having like a significant a significant other person and i don't know i would just think you would want him to have some form of a com of companionship you know he seems really happy about this person it's like what the hell so he knows that if he continues to pursue Lucy, that Gail is going to do everything in her power to break them up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this should be interesting. So then we switch back to Lucy's POV and she's at her office and she's with her partner, Lolly. So Lolly is divorced as well. Her ex-husband, his family owns the local grill which it has really good food, but she doesn't really go because she doesn't really want to run into her ex, you know, even though her ex owns a, some type of music venue, like a bar, it kind of sounds like he owns that it's on the other side of town. But again, if this is his family, this is their restaurant, you know, he's going to come. So that's kind of fun that, they're best friends and they have this business together. You know, that's fun. That's cool. I like that. So Rob Jr., her son, uh, Lucy's son, he works part-time with his father. But Lolly is kind of like, we should snag him and get him to work here. <laughs> and she's like, no, 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 no. I don't want to start any type of turf wars with that type of stuff. And we also find out that Lucy's ex, Rob, he's also got a girlfriend. Her kids aren't that crazy about her. So I don't know if it's just a matter of you're not my mom. You know what I mean? Or if she really is a problem. We, we don't know. Lolly also has a daughter named Maisie, by the way. Again, there's going to be a lot of names. <laughs> and we don't even go through all of the children's names. So then Lolly brings up, you know, Richard and Lucy doesn't want to talk about him. And she's like, we've got orders. We've got to get out today. Ton of stuff to do. They need to hire someone part time to kind of handle a lot of this stuff. Lolly, um, which is why Lolly wanted her to try and poach the son. But she again, she's not going to do anything like that. So then Lucy gets ready for her date with Richard. Amy's like, Mom, you look amazing, X, Y, and Z. And she kind of asks, Lucy asks Amy, her daughter, like, well, 
why didn't you go to dinner with your brother and your dad at the clam shack like you love the clam shack and she's like I really wasn't in the mood I got a lot of homework and plus your lasagna and salad was just what I needed so she tells her mom when her mom's like I won't be I'll be back early she's like don't rush on my account you know so she goes outside Richard of course thinks she looks amazing they go to a little grill place the place that Lolly's ex you know the family spot and the waitress comes up and we find out that Lolly the waitress is Lolly's ex-husband's girlfriend his name is Sandy she's she's super young in early 20s really perky and she knows if Lolly would see this it would really hurt her so even though the divorce is finalized with Lolly it's been pretty difficult for her as well especially knowing that you know he's already moved on and in a relationship you know what I mean so that kind of sucks so she kind of talks about the fact that like for her it's only been like a year since they separated her and Rob and that somewhere she wrote she read I'm sorry that it'll be like in five years is when you'll kind of feel back to normal or something and so she's like I'm nowhere near that so she talks about needing a bookkeeper for the shop um, or someone to help around the shop and he suggests his son Wolfie so Wolfie apparently is going to be moving back into town and he's a book lover he worked at a bookstore in Boston but he's going to be taking a year off Hasn't told the family why, um, but that's what he's going to do. And she says, by all means, give him my information. So the name of where they are is Horseshoe Crab Cove. That I think that's the correct. It's like a, it's not a city necessarily, but you know, kind of like a community. I don't know. So that's where they live. And if I'm not mistaken, they are in Massachusetts after dinner they go for a stroll and he winds up asking her like how did she wind up here so we find out her parents used to come up for summers and then after the divorce her mom got a place there I guess their summer home became her president uh permanent residence and so they move with their mom in the divorce. So at that point, that this is where she grew up and she stayed and she loves it. So he winds up grabbing her and kissing her. It's a very electric, passionate kiss, but she tells him it's too soon. She can't do it. He tells her he understands, but he's hoping they can still be friends. She says friends don't kiss like that. And he says, you're right, but he still would like to just, he wants to just remain in her life. And he says he understands that she's not ready. Um, she is very flustered by Mr. Richard. Um, he says to her that he's dated a lot of women these past 20 years since his wife has passed and he has never met anyone like her, which is sweet, but it also kind of sounds like a line. I'm just saying it does. So we fast forward a little and sure enough, Wolfie winds up coming to work at the store with Lucy. He's really great. He has taken the studio apartment above her garage. He lives there. Now I'm kind of wondering, okay, why isn't he staying at the family home? I'm curious about that. Maybe we'll get a little bit more info. Her kids love him. He plays basketball with Rod Jr. And of course, Amy, she's got a crush on him. You know, she thinks he's hot. So even Lolly, though, thinks he's 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 attractive. And she's like, if she was just 20 years younger, she'd go after him. So then we fast forward maybe two weeks. She gets a call from Richard. And he wanted to ask her out for dinner. But she was like, she's planning uh, like a pizza night, homemade pizzas. And... She asked him if he wanted to come over, and he, of course, was like, yes. And she said, you can bring, you know, any of your children, you know. And it seems all of the kids are adults, so he doesn't have any, like, underage kids. They're all adults. So that's not too bad, you know. 
him 53, I want to say Lucy's late 30s. So that's not too bad. The age thing is is fine. I don't that's great to me. But his children being adults, I think is great too. <laughs> Even though we might have a problem with that Gale. So, Wheezy apparently is going to come. Gale is going to come. And Richard kind of to himself understands Gale's standoffish. She'd rather her dad just become a monk for the rest of his life instead of getting, you know, a... I don't want to say a lover because I feel like that's not that important, but like, <laughs> but having like a real, a special person in his life, you know, which again, I think it's just very selfish on Gail's part. I really do. She's 26. Like, come on. They arrive at six on the dot and Wheezy really friendly. Gail's a bitch. I don't think there's any other way to put it. You know, I just don't. She is just a bitch. <laughs> My thing, it kind of made Lucy feel like, and I had the same thought, like, why does she even come? You know, it's like Lucy's sweet to her, you know, but she's being a bitch. So they make their pizzas and she's like the guard dog. I, I guess Gail thinks she's the guard dog for her dad. That's why she came. Because honestly... With the attitude she was giving Lucy, I was like, bitch, you should have just stayed your ass home. Or Richard could have said, not invited her too. You know what I mean? That could have been an option. Just say, Wheezy, you want to go? <laughs> Simple. <laughs> Simple as that. Well, while they're at the dinner, Richard decides to drop some bombshells. So he wants to move Morgan, uh, Morgan Enterprises from Maine to Massachusetts. Gail, of course, is pissed because she didn't know anything about this. And he's also decided to call the farm Morgan's Fire. She was mad about that, too. So she storms out, leaves Wheezy. She wanted to know, Wheezy just wanted to know if she was going to have any type of a leadership role within the company. He just kind of let her know someday. He also is, there's some vines there and they're going to try and revive the vines and he would like for Wolfie to join in uh, once he finishes his degree in bio something. So I'm kind of wondering why he decided to drop that bomb at the dinner i'm just curious because that's family business just tell the family like why are you saying this in front of other people um wolfie winds up saying to his dad you know you really know how to clear a room so sure enough lucy asked him like what what the reason for doing it here and he said i figured you are a buffer when it came to Wolfie because Wolfie loves and is comfortable being around Lucy and her family. And so that's why he decided to do it there. Because if he would have done it at the home with just the siblings, Wolfie would have ran for the hills. And so she's like, okay, I get it, I guess. But she also kind of said to him, do you know what Wolfie really wants to do? And he kind of has the attitude of, he doesn't really know. Uh, 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 uh. Have you ever asked him what he wants to do? See, when you've already figured out your kid's life, you're going to have a problem because more than likely they're not going to want what you want. And you're not asking him because you don't want to hear it. But that is making your relationship clearly suffer. You know what I mean? Because for this kid to come back and not want to live in your home, but pay rent to stay somewhere else and spend time with that family, something's up. Something's really up. Lucy winds up going to look for Gail, finds her outside on one of the swings. They have a little conversation. Gail doesn't open up too much. Um, Lucy, again, she's friendly. And she can tell there's an issue and she was trying to talk to her 
and it all it's almost like as soon as she was about to start opening up to lucy she shut down and she's like i think we better go you know so she gets up and leaves tells her dad she's ready to go i'm like you grown you can leave you know what i mean but anyway i guess they all rolled there together so they're gonna leave together um but anyway by the time they came by the time she came back in wolfie's he went back to his apartment um her daughter has gone upstairs to do her homework and he stays back to talk to lucy and tells her you know how wonderful of a time he had and he asked her if he could um give her like a small kiss and so of course it turns into this passionate kiss and he tells her you know you're only encouraging me and she just smiles and he leaves out and all she can think of is like damn he is one hell of a kisser we switch to Richard's POV and he's meeting with his nephew, Kyle, who's a vet. And Kyle is actually engaged to Harriet, who is Lucy's sister. I have to say it slow like that because I swear to you, I will forget I will forget the connections with these people. <laughs> so he's a vet. And Richard would like for him to like kind of be the exclusive vet for the farm. And he doesn't want to do that because he likes being, he's the only vet in town. So everyone brings all types of pets to him. And he likes that. He likes feeling like, you know, he's the town vet. He doesn't really want to let that go. But he says, you know, he'll put out some fillers to different people he knows to see if anyone's open to, you know, coming to be the vet for Morgan's Fire. We also find out that Gus is now trying to come back because his fiance's mother and his fiance's name is Lynn. She wants to be closer on like from on the East Coast, which is where she's from. Her mom has fallen sick and Lynn is also pregnant. And so they're not poaching him from the other farm because the farm that he went to was Ben's farm, which is Richard's brother. But it's just because, you know, I think her mother's in Connecticut. And so this is closer for them. So Gus is coming back. So that's great. And again, Gus is the horse whisperer. So that takes care of at least a little bit of the concern with the horses. Cause remember they were trying to, they had to replace Gus and he's trying to get a vet on. So at least that alleviates a little bit of the problem. So Lolly doesn't want to go to the music venue where her ex husband, the little, uh, her ex husband owns her sister's band is coming to play there. She wants to see them. And Lucy's like, listen, it's going to be packed. You probably won't even see him, you know, they play folk music, her sister's band. And so she's like trying to get Wolfie to come and just trying to get a lot of people to come to really help out Lolly, which I think is really sweet. They've also got an upcoming book signing with a high, with some high profile people. Uh, they do really, again, they do really well. And so they got, they've got a lot of good events coming up, so. This has been a really great time for Wolfie to come along. So then we switch to Richard's POV. He's wrapping up everything. He's having a little meeting with the family. It's a business meeting. They do them weekly. And he's like, he's got to wrap it up because he's got a date with Lucy. Gail again is like acting up. And Wheezy is like, why are you acting like that? I like her and I like her kids too. And she says, I see why Wolfie prefers to be over there. And she leaves out with Rich, the older brother, who's also running the company. So he's talking to Gail, kind of trying to figure out what's wrong with her. He's like, you don't have a life. You know, he says, you just work for the company. You come home. That's it. You don't have a social life. And she's like, well, all her friends are back in Maine. And he's like, well, make new ones. He's like, there's a spa. Um, that Lucy's friend mom owns, um, there's, you know, a lot of people, there's Jim, try socializing. She, of course, is like, she's fine. There's nothing wrong with her. And she storms off. 
And I'm just like, yeah, you need a life to focus on because you were a little too focused on your dad's life. So Richard goes to pick up Lucy. They go to a restaurant that she wanted to go to, really exclusive place. And Richard is kind of like, if she talks about a place, if she's just kind of saying, oh, that's really neat. I like that place. Da, 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 da. It's like he is going to make it happen. It's like whatever she dreams, whatever she likes, he wants to make that a reality for her, which is really sweet. Dinner's great. They talk about the Gus situation with him coming back. She told him about the music event coming up, and if he wanted to go, he, of course, super excited. He wants to go. He will absolutely be there. And we find out he actually knows Lolly's ex, uh, Sandy. So he knew him when he was a lot younger, but he's, he's always been a hoe, basically. He didn't say hoe, that's me. I'm just making it a little more, I'm a little more blunt. <laughs> but yeah, he's always been that. And so he tells her like he would like to invite her back to his place, but it wouldn't be very romantic. And she says, it won't be romantic at my place either. They wind up kissing again. She can feel he's getting hard. And he was like, we should um, get a room. And she's like, no, I told you I'm not ready for this. But in her mind, it's kind of like, she's got to make a real decision because she keeps saying no, but he feels really great to her. And her heart is screaming no, but I think, I don't know. It, it could be because it's too soon or is it because you just think it's too soon? You know, I don't, I don't know, but we shall see. So Lucy's on the phone with Harriet. Um, Harriet is Kyle's wife, her sister. And she's talking about the fact that she really does like Richard, but she's afraid she's going to mess it up. And Harriet is like, how are you going to mess up? She's like, you didn't mess up your marriage. Rod did that, you know? And she's like, well, what if it was my fault? And he got bored. She said, again, that's not your fault. That's his fart. fault. Fart. Ha! His fault. You know, he had to communicate if something was wrong. You can't automatically know everything. And she's like, he changed. He wanted a young, a young, a young girl. That's all it was, you know? So she tells her she needs to make an appointment with her therapist, Elise. And I think she does too because she's got a warped side image of what happened. She feels like a failure. She feels like it was her fault that her marriage fell apart. So she makes an appointment. And I'm glad about that. So then we fast forward. It's the night of the event. Her and Richard are there. They're having a good time. Amy's talking to Lolly. And she says to Lolly, do you think he loves mom? And Lolly says, I think he does. And she says, do you think mom loves him? And she says, I think she does, but she's not ready to admit it. So I thought this was kind of nice because we're just, it's its a little sprinkle, you know, but it's a, a, a POV from a couple of the characters. I always like that when they add in other people. So then we shoot back to Richard and Lucy. And after Lolly had spotted Sandy talking to some 20 year old, she pulled Wolfie on the dance floor to dance. So Lucy was like, I need some, you know, some air. So they go outside and it's kind of cool. And Richard takes off his sweater and gives it to her. And she's like, now you'll be cold. He says, never next to you. So they start kissing. His dick's hard. She's like, at this point, she's just giving in. So they go around the corner to this little porch shelter area. And she drops her jeans. And they have a nice little hard fuck. Now, here's the thing. He said, I don't have any protection. She said, I do. But she was lying. I hope this girl don't get pregnant. I really do. Um, I don't think she wants to start over, and I damn sure don't think he wants to start over at 53, and he already got eight fucking grown kids. I'm just saying. So, then they hear someone, and they, you know, scramble to get their uh, clothes back on, go inside, and when they go inside, she gets tapped on the shoulder by Rob, her ex-husband, saying, oh, I thought that was you. Lucy, of course, is shocked to see him, and he asked her if Amy's there, and she said, yeah, she's over there with Lolly, um... And then he looks at Richard and Richard, you know, introduced himself as Richard Morgan. And Rob goes, are you the one doing the development? And he says, guilty as charged. He's like, oh, okay. And then behind him comes his girlfriend, Chloe. 
bird song i think is her last name anyway so she sees lucy and she goes oh you and i'm like oh this bitch so then she turns to richard and she wants to know who he is and all this type of stuff then she wants to go dancing so they leave and go on the dance floor lucy immediately feels sick she has to go to the restroom she throws up lolly comes in there to check on her she tells lolly you know i just had great sex with richard and lolly was shocked because she did not think she was gonna do that you know she's like but i'm still struggling with this divorce you know i want something new i want something new out of life you know and lolly tells her i get where you're coming from it's still difficult for me to see my ex with other women you know and I too want something different, you know, I want something for me too, you know, she's like, that's why I think it's important that you go see at least the therapist because she can help you process through this, you know, so then they're going to go out and have the DJ place, um, something to talk about by Bonnie Ray. So then Richard takes Lucy home and she apologized to him. And he says, you're fine. I understand, you know, and she says she's she made it she's gonna make an appointment with a therapist and he's like that's a good thing he's like a therapist saved my life more than once after my wife died you know and he gets it and i like he's being patient he should be you know you have someone that is freshly about to get divorced because i don't think the divorce is final yet this is it's a touchy time you know what i mean so nothing should be rushed. It really shouldn't be. Just enjoy the friendship or the situationship that you all find yourself in because you're not just friends. Enjoy it. And eventually she'll come around probably, you know. That's the best I can think of to do. So we do find out that apparently what happened with Rob, he had been fucking around for a couple years and she had no idea. So I see why she has that whole, it's my fault. I couldn't even, you know, figure out that my husband was cheating on me with someone else. Again, you can't blame yourself for that. Especially, you you know, you got to think, you have people that are good cheaters and they know how to remain the same and you never know what's going on. So I know that's also easier said than done because she was in that marriage for a long time, you know. But... She knows she needs to get it together because Richard Morgan has shown her so far that he's a great man and she just doesn't want to lose out on that. So Lucy picks up her mother the next day. They go to church and during the church service, she's thinking about fucking. It's wild. They go for breakfast and afterward, uh, Harry and her sister kind of is messing with her about the potential with Richard and... Um, Harriet won't be there for thanks. Will Harriet be there for Thanksgiving? I'm trying to remember. Um, Lucy's going to go over to Richard's for Thanksgiving because the kids are going to be with their dad for Thanksgiving. She'll get them for Christmas and then they go back with their dad for New Year's. And so Richard has invited her to come over for Thanksgiving. It's going to be like 20 plus people. And. It'll be nice because I don't think she wants to sit home alone because you got to think if you're used to having your family with you and then all of a sudden they're gone. That's like a lot. So she had a flashback. Um, her sister-in-law, Sally, Rob's sister, they weren't the best of friends, but they were cool with each other. But she saw her the other day and the woman was like acting as if she was in a rush, like she couldn't talk. And it was just weird to her because it was like, Sally had never been that way with her but you know when you're getting divorced it's like there's allegiances you know you hate to make it sound that way but there is and that is her brother so hey which is fucked up yeah it's your brother but you also know your brother did this woman dirty maybe she knew and she didn't say anything or maybe she knows what happened and it just still like, she don't know what to say. So, sometimes people just feel like, I just, I'd rather just stay out of all of it. You know, maybe it's not even about picking sides. It's just about just not trying to be involved in it because it's so messy, you know? 
as Lucy's pulling up into her yard, um, she gets a call from her lawyer, Chris, and they are going to sign the final paperwork for the divorce tomorrow. And so it's only supposed to be about 15 minutes, pretty quick. And so she gets out the car, she sits on the porch, closes her eyes for a moment, and is awoken by someone saying, Luce, and it's Rob. And he's like, I just wanted to check on you, make sure you're okay, you know, after you saw us last night. And um, and she, he was like, also, the, you know, the court thing tomorrow. And she's like, I'm fine. You don't need to be showing up unannounced. That is not okay. And you don't get to call me loose anymore because that's a term of endearment. It's Lucy. And he asked her if she wanted a ride tomorrow. She's like, do I want to ride with you to the courthouse for the divor- to sign the divorce papers? No. So she goes in the house, slams the door, tears come down her face. Back door opens. It's Rob Jr. He, of course, was like, was that dad? And she's like, yeah. He sees her face. See, she's upset. And he's like, he upset you, didn't he? And she's like, it's okay, I'm fine. And the son proceeds to tell her that he overheard the dad talking to someone about that he was going to try and win her back. And Lucy's like, that's not going to happen. He's like, is it because of Mr. Morgan? And she says, he has nothing to do with it. And he, she's like, your dad's got a girlfriend, you know? He's been with her for years. Like, what are you talking about? And the kid's like, you know... I, this is, I'm going to say this. The kids just would like for their life to go back to normal, right? Both of the parents in the home, that's more settled for them. That's what they would prefer. So if they hear one parent saying they, they're they going to try and make that happen, I understand this kid feeling like, okay, if we can get that back, that's what we want. You know what I'm saying? Because they're kids, They would want their family back together. They don't look at it from the perspective of he hurt your mom. He, you know, he fucked up the family. He's not going to look at it that way. And so she has to be the adult, you know, because, you know, I could see him very much just like Gail is a bitch. He could become an asshole to Mr. To Richard. Right. And feel like my family's not together because my mom likes you. You know what I mean? So, but she's a little concerned because she's wondering if Rob is talking to the kids about her. And if that's going on, if he's trying to get information out of these kids, that's a problem. And I agree. Because it's like, you got your girlfriend, you living your life, and now you're trying to, like, fuck with mine when I decide to start something new. That's fucked up. And see, a kid ain't going to see the selfishness in it because they're in their own selfishness of, I want my family back. You know, I want it to be the way it was all these years. Next day, she goes to the courthouse. She sees Rob. They go through the whole thing. They sign the divorce papers. That's it. She feels a little emotionally drained. She's about to go lay down when there's a knock on the door. It was Richard. He's like, I just want to come and check on you. He had heard through the grapevine at the cafe that she was going to court this morning. And so, um, being that it's a small town, people talk, you know. And so, he just wanted to make sure she was okay. That was it. He just hugged her and just sat with her for a little while. And afterwards, she felt so much better. She decided, you know what, I'm just going to go into work. And Lolly was surprised to see her. And she told her what happened with Richard. And Lolly says he seems like a really nice guy. You know, so she's going to go pick up their lunch orders. Lucy is and she runs into Sandy, Lolly's ex. He, of course, is being messy and nosy. And oh, I see there's a new guy in your life. And she's just like, he's a friend. And he's like, yeah, we go way back. She's like, yeah, he told me. She's not really not. She's not really trying to have a discussion with him, you know, and she leaves out. And then we switch to Richard's POV. He's arguing, arguing with Gail because she wants to get multiple tables Richard wants his big happy one big table for everyone to sit around and have this great Thanksgiving together it's Thanksgiving um her mom is coming um it's a nice event Gail is snarky but nothing too unbearable Lucy really enjoyed herself 
and um, she enjoyed watching him with his family. It, it made it a, a lot better for her. So when she did leave and go home, even though the house was empty, it made it bearable because this Thanksgiving, the kids are with the father, but she was able to spend time with family still and see another great family, you know, so it was nice for her. I'm glad she had that family environment. You know, I do feel like if she didn't go over there, it would have been a lot harder for her. I really do. Christmas is now coming up. And so Lucy tells Lolly that she can come over as well as Wolfie, whether it's Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, because she's going to have the, the kids for Christmas. And so she gets a call from Richard and he asks if he could take everyone out for lunch. But Lolly and Wolfie were busy. So he's going to he was happy because Richard just wanted to honestly just take her he was just trying to be nice <laughs> so she's like okay I'll meet you at the cafe she runs into one of Rob's co-workers and the guy hugs her tells her how great she looks and all this type of shit so the guy is single but he's clearly checking her out and Richard is standing back just kind of watching and we find out the guy is actually Richard's new doctor. And she's like, it's a small town, you know. This is what happens. They're good for some things and it's annoying in some other ways. And so she gets a phone call after they've eaten. She gets a call from Rob and she doesn't answer the call. And Richard's like, you know, if you need to answer it, you can. She's like, no, he's been trying to get back together ever since he saw us together at Sandy's. And, you know... And Richard was just kind of like, is that something you would like? Like, would you consider going back to him? And she's like, no, absolutely not. I do not want him. And um, she's like, I'm sorry, because I know I probably sound like a basket case. And he's like, no, you're fine. You know, it's a lot. And she just kind of tells him, you know, that she thinks things are probably not going that well with Chloe for Rob. And that's why he's bothering her on top of the fact that he saw Lucy with somebody else. You know, that's all it is. So he invited her to come over Friday because Gus and his and uh, his fiance Lynn are going to be back in town. And um, she, of course, is all down for it. She's like, absolutely. I'll be there with bells on. Lucy's at the office, she's working, and then Rob Brennan stops by, her ex-husband. And she, of course, is like, what are you doing here? Even Lolly had, well, of course, Lolly had an attitude, because, you know, she doesn't like ex-husbands. <laughs> but especially, he did Lucy dirty, you know what I mean? So, he was like, can I just talk to you for a minute? So, she goes outside and she's like what do you want he's like i miss you i think i made a mistake she said i don't know what this is about if you and chloe can't get along you need to try and work out you know work on your communication you know? he keeps going with the you know i really miss you like you were my best friend okay so you had that and you decided it wasn't what you wanted right so she knows what this is. She's like, this is his competitive, competitiveness. He knows someone else is in the picture. Because you got to think, they've been separated for a year. So for this whole year, you didn't figure this out. The moment you see me with someone else, now you've had an epiphany. It has nothing to do with the other. has nothing to do with really missing her. It's she went and she upgraded. I left her and she upgraded and his ego can't take it. That's all it is. So now he's going to start nitpicking everything when it comes to Chloe. Now she could be a jerk. I don't know. But more than likely it's because you're trying to find a reason to let her go to get back to Lucy. But you should have saw all of these things before. You've had enough time. So then he proceeds to say to her, are you really telling me no? Or is it because of the Morgan guy? And she said, I'm telling you no, because the answer is no. He's like, well, the kid seems to think that you're in love with the Morgan guy. 
and that if you weren't, we could, we could, you know, work things out. And she told him, Chloe is your friend now. Chloe is your soft space for you to land. That's that. You know, and he's still on them. Sorry, I made a mistake, whatever, whatever. And she, you know, again, remember she said six months ago, she probably would have taken him back. She was still missing her old life that much in spite of everything that he had done to her, you know. But he fucked up and and that's it. There's no going back for her. and She shouldn't have to. She does have a Richard seems like a really good dude. We switch to Richard's POV and he's having his weekly meeting with his kids. They're talking about different things. Wheezy's coming up with a couple of suggestions. Um, she wants to start a 4-H club. Rich is going to look into the liability. It's great. After the meeting, he pulls Rich aside and asks him if he has an issue with him dating Lucy. And he, of course, is like, no, I don't have an issue at all. I think she's great. He's like, Gail's having a hard time because Gail kind of sees herself as a woman of the house and she didn't need to scare off the other women because there was nothing serious. This is the first time she's seen you serious with someone and it's freaking her out, but she'll come around eventually. So then Richard starts talking about trying to get Gail a fella. And I'm just kind of like, that's not going to work. Rich told him you probably need to leave that alone, but he's trying to do something to get her you know into more social gatherings which I do think she needs to do whether she, now we don't know if she rocks with male or female we don't know but she does need to get out because her life is she goes to work and she comes home that's it she doesn't do anything else so she does need more things to do Lucy goes over to Richard's for the little get together for Gus and Lynn. We find out that Lynn's mom has pancreatic cancer. It's a pretty grim diagnosis. Thankfully, she's got her other siblings um, that are close by as well. But yeah, this is that's tough. So Gail is trying to mon monopolize Richard's time. He's trying to like keep it to where Lucy and him can't talk, but it's okay with Lucy. She has her sister Harriet there and they're having a good time talking with different people. So then Richard comes up to get Lucy and he takes her in an office and he grab in his office because this is his home. He grabs her, pulls her against the wall, kisses her and tells her how much he misses her. And he's like, I haven't been really able to see you all week. I really miss you. And so as they're kissing, he winds up fingering her. She's wet. And she's like, I'm sorry. He's like, you clearly miss me too. And she's like, no, we can't do this. There's people here. So he says, all right, if you want a chicken out, it's fine. Well, then that made her just go, oh, there's no chicken here. So she drops her jeans and she's like, what are you going to do about it? And they wind up having a nice hard bug against the wall. So they were trying to be silent. But I'm like, if y'all fucking against the wall, people are going to hear the boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? <laughs> you might as well just yell out in ecstasy. <laughs> so then someone comes down the hall. It sounds like Rich. And they're yelling like, Dad, Dad. And so... They sneak out the back way and they're going to act like they've been taking a stroll and come through the kitchen. So they did that. She snuck into the restroom, but Harriet gets her, comes in there and is like, oh, what, what, what were you doing? And she's like, nothing. She's like, yes, you were. She's like, we could hear you. And she's like, no, she's like, I wasn't screaming. And she's like, we heard you. There were noises. So she's like, but just relax. You're an adult. Chill out, you know. And so eventually she was able to relax, you know, but <laughs> she was freaking out. <laughs> Lucy comes home after getting some shopping done. She figures, you know what? She'll try and wrap up some presents. 
Well, while she's doing that, there's a knock on the door and it's Gail. Gail comes in and lets her know that she heard what her and her father were doing and how inappropriate it was. And that they're new to this place and it's not giving a good impression when she's banging her father around other people. And Lucy's like, we were in his home and Gail goes our home. So again, she's just a territorial bitch, you know, and it just is what it is. And then she also makes the comment like, you know, he's been, you know, a little smitten with you ever since he met you at the ranch in Arizona. So again, that's where they originally met when she was out there visiting um, Lucy at the ranch which is owned by ben who is richard's brother oh my gosh it's just so many goddamn names <laughs> but anyway so gail told is basically telling her said to her you like you need to end it all this type of stuff all this crap and she wasn't really rude to her but i kind of would have been but it's like you're not trying to be nasty to her, but it's when you want to say, okay, I need you to stay in a child's place. Even though you're an adult, I need you to stay in a child's place because you, what you're not going to do is come in here and tell me if you can't say this to your father, you can't say this to me either. I'm sorry. I'm an adult. We're both adults. So Gail done lost her fucking mind, you know? And she made a comment like, and you can tell him, you know, all you want. You know, she says about, you know, he's had plenty of women before you. I bet you didn't know that. And she's like, I know about the other women. You told me about them. That shocked her. But it's like this. I don't see why people think this shit works. Unless you're dealing with like a really weak kind of individual, which maybe she kind of views her that way because she is coming out of a divorce not as confident she's not giving this full commitment to our boy richard i maybe she feels like this this is the way to stop it i can't stop my father but if i can stop her from coming around my father then he has no choice but to let go i that's got to be her that's got to be the logic right but i just didn't like it it was fucked up and um it's just shitty you know it's like she doesn't want to come between a father and daughter and i feel like that's what's going to probably stop her from talking to him because she's going to feel like i don't want to be the reason that there's a rift between the two of you you know and i understand that i get that that makes perfect sense it sure enough it causes some doubts in her mind she already had thirty thousand of them so this just gives her more and when she goes into um the office she talks to wolfie and kind of asks him if he had an issue with anything and he's like no absolutely not um we find out that him and gail don't get along wolfie is the baby so wolfie was the one that the mother was pregnant with when like she's that's the last kid so i'm wondering if that's where why he feels kind of ostracized like he never got to meet the mother um and maybe that's why he feels different and he just feels separate or do they treat him differently i'm not really sure but he doesn't really get along with gail but that's kind of easy because she a bitch sorry i don't know no other way to put it she is a bitch thankfully lucy has a session a therapy session today with elise so she can kind of talk all this stuff out because she needs it um because you know what she even tried to tell the girl um when she was saying something about replacing her mom and she says to her like no one can replace your mom and Gail gets this look that goes comes over her face kind of like oh because I guess she just assumes that's what every woman is going to try and do come in replace the mother and wipe out her memories I don't know I think people watch too much tv <laughs> every <laughs> like as much as your father has loved 
clearly love your mother. He has never, he hasn't remarried in 20 years. So clearly he wouldn't just let someone come in and just wipe away the memory of your mother. But you know, when you're in your feelings, you're in your feelings. And when you don't have a life outside of something, you super focus in on one thing. It's just, it is what it is. So she's going to have her session. We're excited about this because when I tell you she need therapy, <laughs> she really needs it. Lucy goes to meet with Elise. It's a pretty good session. And Elise tells her, you know, she thinks she does need to tell Richard about the conversation she had with Gail. And she gave her some homework to do, which was whenever there was any type of a situation where she had to kind of maybe make a decision, she really needed to evaluate how she felt and write down that emotion. And just in general, when she's around people, what is the emotion that you feel around this person? And they also got a little bit into talking about her father it drifted to that conversation. She, of course, had not anticipated that. So his name was like Judd or something like that. Judd Jude, something like that. And he was the sweetest man until he started drinking. And then he became abusive. And the mother, Helen, her mother, took a lot of the brunt of it. But apparently now he doesn't drink. He's remarried, but he still misses her mom. And... We find out her husband, Rob, always had a great relationship with her mom, Helen. He used to always go over there, visit with her, and he would get upset with Lucy for continuing to talk to her father. Even though it wasn't a close relationship, he just felt like there was an allegiance that needed to be given to the mother because he loved her mother so much. But you see how a person can have that thought process and then still can't understand why when it came to them, she no longer wanted to talk to him anymore. He couldn't understand it. I think because he felt like, well, you could still talk to your father. And he was kind of a monster sometimes. He was like Dr. Jerkle, Mr. Hyde. And you could talk to him. So why can't you talk to me? So after her session, she goes back to work. Lolly, of course, wants the details. <laughs> of the session and she just says it was a good session um she gave me some homework to do just kind of that and left it at that you know she didn't go into like detail detail and so lolly is thinking about possibly giving elise a call because she's having a hard time with her divorce as well and so we fast forward to christmas eve and she has this holiday party so everyone in the neighborhood so each year it rotates Every, someone gives the holiday party for the neighborhood. So this year is her year and she's super excited. The kids are at their father's, but they told her they were going to come back for the party. And they're going to be with the dad for, wait a minute. Are they going to be with the dad for Christmas? No, they're going to be with her for Christmas. And then back to the father for New Year's. So she gets a call from Richard he asked her what she was doing for the rest of the day and she said well she's gonna go to church with her mom at four and he was like well would you mind if i came along and she said sure so he tags along her mom helen loves him harriet likes him but harriet already knows him because you know harriet is engaged to kyle kyle is richard's nephew <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, she already knows him. So she's starting to think about possibly selling the house. Lucy is just a lot of memories. And she just kind of feels like maybe it's time for her to just move forward and maybe living here, even though it's familiar to the kids, it kind of makes her feel trapped. And I'm kind of a back and forth on that. I kind of feel like being that you're not going to go back to the father, 
this can be one concession you can make to keep them in the home that they remember that they're comfortable in just for their sake i think for that that you can do i don't think you need to be in a loveless marriage but i think you can kind of suck it up and live there now i don't think he was like knocking her around the, the house or anything so it's not like it's bad memories like that or you know just she has good memories of the home like the affair went on she just didn't know about it and it upsets her that it went on for as long as it did and she didn't know but there's not necessarily bad memories in the home so that's why i just kind of feel like i would stay um that makes more sense to me as for especially with the kids now if the kids tell you they don't care they'd rather leave then okay go ahead and, and dip but I do think it's she's gonna talk to the kids about it I think that's a good idea not to just make a decision I think kind of maybe get their input on that because that's gonna affect them you know she throws the party it goes really well Gail even came and seemed to have a pretty good time she found some people her age they seem to be have a good conversation Richard came in where she was getting some things, um, some puffs or something to pass out. And he wanted to help her. He really wanted to fuck her, but she was not able to do that at that moment. <laughs> He's like, no one would hear us with like all of the chattering, the noise going on. She's like, that is not happening tonight. <laughs> she also has someone there named uh, her aunt Frankie. She apparently stays over on Christmas Eve every year. So it's nice for her that she's still being able to keep some of the traditions that made her happy before. So it's Christmas. Richard is having his festivities with his family. They're having discussions at brunch about the uh, Gus Rodriguez because Wheezy, not Gus Rodriguez, I'm sorry. They're having a discussion about a party, the Rodriguez's, and Wheezy and Gail were invited to this New Year's Eve party, and Wolfie, he talked a little bit in the meeting, not too much. He normally doesn't engage in a lot of conversation, but then when they started talking about the Rodriguez's, he kind of, you know, pepped up, because he knows Lolly was married to Sandy Rodriguez and he kind of is just saying how you know how horrible Sandy did Lolly you know he's got thoughts right I don't know if him and Lolly got something going on or if it's just a matter of I'm around these people they develop a friendship you know so you get defensive about your friends but Gail was just kind of like she wanted to go but she was acting like she really didn't want to go she was just being Gail we're just going to say it like that so he then gets a call from no Richard went and called Lucy snuck away so he could talk to her and asked her how everything was going and there they decided to meet up they're going to take a walk in this like wooded area and so they meet up, take the walk. He pulls out a gift for her. She's like, oh, no, I left your gift at home. He's like, don't worry about it. Just open this one. So it's got like horse. It's a bracelet. Beautiful. It's got horseshoe crabs and emeralds because it's her birthstone. Because he, of course, has done investigation to find out when her birthday is. Because she is sure as hell hasn't told him. <laughs> she at first was like, it's too much. It's too much. And he's just like, I'm loaded. I promise it doesn't hurt me. Like, I like to give you things. So she hugged him, told him how special he was. They walked back to her place. And whoever was downstairs held him was like, um, let me show you a book upstairs to give him some privacy. And then she gave him her gift, which was this scarf that she knitted. He absolutely loved it. And he stayed over there for a little bit longer. Amy and Rob came, Rob Jr. came and that was that they had a good night she just kind of looked at the bracelet and smiled 